So these are the techniques. The first thing that you need to be able to do is read and understand the problem. Okay. If it takes you three times to read it and understand it, that's probably about normal. Okay? But you read and reread and reread and reread until it solidifies in your brain what the heck you're trying to do. Second thing is to identify what you know. That may include putting a diagram down. Okay? So we've got to just lay it out on the table. Okay, what do we know? Put it out there. Third thing, identify what you want to know. Okay? In essence, what is, uh, what is the question of uh, the problem here? What is, what is being asked? We have to identify what we want to know. <coughs> Number four says, identify or create the equation to maximize or minimize. Okay, these are optimization. We're finding a highest value or a lowest value. We're either maximizing something or minimizing something. Number five says, use the curve sketching techniques. These are the things that we've been studying for all the sections prior to this. So you're going to be finding the first derivative. Set it equal to zero. Find the critical values. Use those critical values to find the maximum or the minimum. Okay. And then finally, and most important here, answer the question. Okay. Don't do the whole problem and then forget to answer the question. Okay. All right, so let's do the first one. I'm hoping to get to the the first, uh, the, we'll get through the first one and, and, and we'll see how far we get on the second one today. So the first problem says this. Find me two numbers, find two positive numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is large as possible. Okay, what's the answer? 10 and 10, right? Problem that we can solve relatively quickly. So, here's what we're going to do. Everybody understand the problem? Okay, we're out to find two numbers that add up to 20 and multiply to be the highest. So we identify what we know. Well, I'm going to help you out on this one. We're going to say, all right, I know that I've got a number. Okay, so I'm going to let x equal the first number. Okay. If I do that, then something automatically becomes the second number. Now I could use y, couldn't I? X is the first one, y is the second one. But every, when I, as soon as I start introducing new variables, that becomes bad. Okay, we want single, we want one variable. Who knows what I could put in here? 20 minus x. Good, 20 minus x. This is a cool technique because those two numbers add up to be 20 all the time. Okay, x plus 20 minus x gives you, gives you 20. Okay, so we identify what we know. All right, uh, identify what you want to know. What do we want to know? Yeah, so does it make sense that um, we want to multiply two numbers and get it equal to get it equal to uh, as large as possible. So we know that product here is going to be multiplying those two. Okay, um, next. Identify or create the equation to maximize or minimize. In this problem, we've got to multiply these two and I want to make it be the highest. So I'm going to create an equation. I'm going to call it P of X. P of X is the stands for product, and we're going to have X is in it. The product comes from multiplying the two numbers together. Well, according to here, X is the first number, and 20 minus X is the second number. Okay. So I just created an equation called it P. And it comes from taking the first number times the second number. That's the equation that we're going to try to maximize. That is, find the top, find the maximum. 
Okay? Now, with that equation, we're going to use our curve sketching techniques. Okay? So, how do I find the maximum of the function p? Critical values. How do we find critical values? Okay. Find the derivative and then okay. set it equals zero. This one's a continuous, so there's no problem with being undefined. So actually, I'm going to clean this up a bit. P of x, this is the same as 20x minus x squared. Right? I didn't take the derivative, all I did was clean it up. So P prime of x, now we're doing derivative. The derivative is 20 minus 2x. Okay. All right, found the derivative. Set it equal to 0. And solve. Solve that puppy. Look at that. There's a 10. Now, what does 10 represent in this problem so far? It's a critical value. That's it. Okay. We know that x represents the first number, but at this moment, it's just a critical value. Okay. Now, if you have a number, if you have a critical value here and x equals 10, doesn't that mean that you could either have a maximum or a minimum? Okay. We don't know which one it is as of right now. How can we figure out which one it is? T-table. We're going to make the chart now. So let's see here. We got x, and we have p prime, and I've got 10, and I've got 0. Right? This is what we've been doing the whole time, trying to work this out. Okay, what next? Yeah, so uh, I'll just stick a 9 over here and 11 over here. If I plug 9 into the derivative, what do I get? I get a positive number, that's the most important part here. If I plug 11 into the derivative, what do I get? I get a negative. Okay, what does a positive number mean right here? The function is increasing. Over here, decreasing. The function is decreasing, or P is decreasing. So, what does that mean that happens at x equals 10? The maximum. We're going up and then down. Okay. So right here, we're gonna we're gonna kind of wrap that up. We're gonna say this. Therefore, we've got to justify ourselves here. A maximum occurs at x equals 10 Zach. Oh. <laughs> because because. <laughs> Says what? So p prime changes from positive to negative. Excellent. Because p prime changes from positive to negative. That's important to justify that in that way. We just verified that we have a maximum. Okay, now we're going to answer the question. Therefore, Here's our answer. What do we know? We know that the first number is 10. That was our x value. That was 10. And the second number is 20 minus 10, which is 10. And we completed the problem.